do me a quick favor and look around. Look around you at all the people around you. God is so perfect in all of his ways. Do you know that God doesn't make a mistake, right? God is flawless and he doesn't make a mistake. And so as you look around, look at every single one who's in this room. I want you to know that God did not make a mistake on you. The enemy has come in like a flood to try to steal our identities from us. But we know that Satan is a liar. We know that our God is faithful and he's full of love and he's perfect and his creation has been made perfect. And so as you look around, look at all of the different nations that are represented in this church. We have different backgrounds. We have different cultures. We have different... Um, things that we hold sacred, but we come together with one thing in common, and that is to lift up the name of Jesus. You see our brothers and sisters behind us that are dressed so beautifully, representing their culture with black history, um, wanting to celebrate the culture that God created. There's another culture that's heavy on many of our hearts this morning, and that is our Ukrainian brothers and sisters. And so while the ushers are coming forward to prepare for tithes and offerings, I, I believe that we need to lift up the people in Ukraine today. And I want to also say that we need to lift up the people in Russia who are not being represented by their government. We need peace in our land. And if we are the ones who are not going to step in and pray for these people, then peace isn't going to come because you and I are the salt of the earth. Salt preserves. And so if we are going to preserve this land, it's because we need to intercede and we need to ask our good father to step in and be the prince of peace that we know that he is. Amen. Amen. And so, Father, we just lift up the people in Ukraine right now, oh God, people who have been scattered, the families that have been torn apart, the people who are hiding in shelter right now, the elderly who did not have the opportunity to escape. We pray right now divine intervention. We ask, oh God, that you would hide them in secret places, that the enemy would walk past them and not even see them. I pray that you would fortify their buildings, oh God, that there would be no collapse, that bombs would not work properly, that missiles would be missed guided, oh God. We pray for your divine intervention, Father, that no weapon that has been formed against them would be able to prosper. We pray, oh God, that even the soldiers that are there to attack them, that they would begin to surrender and say, we want peace and not war. We pray that the, where the enemy has come in to bring fear to that land, we pray that the fear would turn back on them and that they would retreat back to their own land, oh God. We declare peace over that land right now in the name of Jesus. We declare that your peace would reign. We pray, oh God, for our four square churches that are located in Ukraine, for our four square churches that are located in Russia. Father, you know that they've already created a joint statement of being united in prayer. We come behind them and we lift them up. We pray that with revival would break out in that land, oh God, that soldiers would get radically saved by the blood of the lamb. Father, that your weapons that you bring with your angels would prosper, oh God, and that the enemy's weapons would not. Bring, land, bring peace to that land. Bring peace, oh God, to our world. Protect our cyber um, security, oh God, all throughout the land. Lord, I just pray that there would be no more disruption. We know that we're on the verge of a global revival and the enemy's trying to stop it, but he cannot thwart the plan of God. Lord, because you are sovereign. And so we stand united as a global church asking for your spirit to just flood the earth, oh God, that peace would be restored. Have